What's happening everybody? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the media screen in the 2022 Hyundai Kona Electric. It's going to be a pretty straightforward process, probably about 15-20 minutes or so to go through everything though. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what's going on with that media screen. Right next up, taking a peek at the media screen of the vehicle. So really, really great look. And this is the 10.25 inch media screen that is going to be standard inside of the ultimate version of the vehicle. Now, if you're in the preferred, so that's going to be the SEL inside of the US, that's going to be an eight inch media screen instead. But either way, you will have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. And typically we will be met with either this screen or our home screen there. This main screen is where we've got a guest or we can change individual users. So if you've got multiple people People driving the vehicle you can literally set a profile up for as many people as you'd like to so definitely a nice thing if you've got multiple people driving this thing so we can press our little home button there and we've also got a series of different other buttons there as well so we can turn our display off completely if we wanted to button press to bring it back to life again and we've got a series of different settings so let's kind of go through screen by screen in order to figure out exactly what's going on so we've got our basic summary screen there we've got our EV button there so our EV button we can see where the next closest charge station is we've got our current charge status our DC versus AC charging. We've got a series of different EV settings there as well. So we've got our utility mode, which is going to use the high voltage battery in order to power the devices connected to the vehicle. We've got our winter mode. We've got a basic range warning, so letting us know that, you know, destination that is going to be a little bit further than what our range is. So we can turn that one on or off if we want as well as our route. So this is going to be what charging stations are available on the actual route itself. And we can toggle that one on or off if we want to. So it is nice to know that the map is at least smart there to know and let us know when we should be coming up to a charge that might be available. We've got our map there as well. So really, really nice look there. As you can see, we've got quite a few different options that are available. So we've got our, let's actually bring the menu back up. So we've got our nearby point of interest. We can save different things. We've got our traffic display, and then we can again, turn the display off if we wanted to. We've got our home button, our compass, navigation. We can increase or decrease this way if we want to. So just go with plus and minus. We can do our pinch to zoom as well. And then we can literally just drag and drop if we wanted to go that route. So we do have that flexibility. And as we kind of drag and drop there, we can kind of set it as a waypoint. So we want to go to a specific location. We just kind of set it there. We can save it as a favorite. We can set it as a destination or we can set it as parking there. So we've got a little bit of flexibility. And actually one thing while we're in the map itself. Now one other thing, we can press this button along the side in order to be able to kind of hide whatever is going on there. And it just stretches the map out and it looks so, so much nicer doing it this way so really really great look and layout there again pressing the menu is going to bring up that base menu there and we can also search for addresses now we've got a few different ways that we can actually search for addresses we can literally type in gps coordinates we can start typing in a city we can add a home or a work address in as well and one of the nice things about doing that is let's say if you know you want to navigate home you literally do that so you'd add in your home address there then you press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and say navigate home and whatever address you have saved to your home or work is going it's going to navigate you there so really really smart if we select this is an address that i was literally just searching for we've got our guidance we've got different routes and we've got our route avoidance options so route avoidance options we can avoid freeways toll roads things like that so if you know you don't want to you know hit a few things while you're driving you want to completely avoid let's say the 407 or other toll roads we've got that flexibility to let the vehicle determine what that's going to look like so we've got a few different things we can set different waypoints as well just by kind of dragging the map so if you have different spots you need to go to you can add in different waypoints as well or you can just press start guidance in order to be able to guide us out to where we need to be we can pause the route if we want to and then if we hit the nav button there on the screen, that's going to pull up some additional settings. So there are quite a few different settings that are available here. So firstly, let's actually cancel the route that we just started. So we just hit cancel route, route's now canceled. Let's go back to the map for a second there. So this is going to be our base map view. This is going to be our nav view. So whatever screen we're on. So if we're on the home button, the home screen there, we could technically hit the map or we just hit the map button along the very bottom of the screen. We jump back into our nav settings. We've got different places, point of interest icons and categories. So that's gonna be things like gas stations, restaurants, things like that. We can look at previous destinations. We've got our address book where we can set in a certain number of favorites. Moving back, we've got different Hyundai dealerships. So we can see kind of who's close by. If we had a route going, we could cancel the route out. So let's actually go back to our map. Let's search, go to this previously done address, start it. I'll show you why. So we go to navigation and we've got our route overview. So we can see exactly what's going on with the route. We go back, we can edit it if we want to. 
So we can kind of see exactly what's going on there. We can back out and we can look at some different root options. So again, this is kind of going to let us go into this other part of the map screen. So a little bit of flexibility there. And again, that's our root avoidance options and things like that. Pressing back, it's going to resume the previous root in a second. And then we just cancel out in order to cancel the root out that we had set. So it is really that simple. Moving back into our home screen, we've got our navigation menu again, which again, we can hit by just pressing, by pressing that hot key at the very bottom there. Along the top, we've got our phone now. So phone, we've got quite a few different options that are available there. So we've got our settings. So if we hit settings for a second, we can take a look and see what phones we've got connected. So there was a phone that was currently connect, that was connected at one point. We can delete that device very simply if we want to. So as you can see, we are now fully deleted from the vehicle. It really is that simple to be able to do it. Moving back, let's actually go through how to set up a phone. So we're going to go to our phone settings there. We've got our hands-free calling or Bluetooth audio. So we want to make sure we keep both of those selected and hit OK. Okay, so on your phone, what you're going to want to make sure you do is have your Bluetooth turned on. And we're looking for Kona along the bottom or whatever you have the vehicle named. So we're going to hit that, make sure that the pin numbers match up and they do. So we're going to hit pair. Here we go. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? Yes, we absolutely want to do that. Perfect. And we are now connected. So if we hop into my phone, okay, so it's downloading my contacts now, but we hop in, we've got my dial pad messages, contacts, and a number of other things. So really is that straightforward in order to be able to connect a phone to the vehicle. We can see what's going on with my current battery status, my signal, and things like that. So really, really nice to know that we've got that option. Now, message access request, do we want to allow access to messages? Yes, no. And that's just going to be a message notification that's going to come up on our phone there. Right now, in order to be able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing, it's very straightforward. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take our USB cable and we're going to plug it into that front USB port there. So we're going to plug in. And nextly, we're just going to take the opposite end of the cable and we're just going to plug ourselves in. Bam. And there we go. So Apple CarPlay, so we're just gonna hit next. Do we wanna allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yep, we wanna make sure we do that. Okay, so there we go. So we can literally use Siri in our iPhone settings. So we can press that voice command prompt on our steering wheel to have Siri going. But we hop into Apple CarPlay now and look at this. We've got our Apple Maps, or we've got, yeah, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. And we can use it all through this middle screen here, and it's stretched out across the entire screen, which I love the look of this thing. Now, a couple things to note about the actual stretch across the entire screen. It's not going to be that way as a default, and I'll show you what I mean. Because if we go back to, if you ever want to get out of that screen, you just hit the high and A button there. And that's just going to take us back to this main screen here. Now, if we go, let's actually disconnect for a second, and I'll show you why. We go into our setup, device connections, Apple CarPlay. Use split screen on CarPlay screen. So if we press that one, watch this now. We're going to plug back in. Perfect. So it kicks us out of that screen. And here we go. So we're going to go. Apple CarPlay is connected. We just have to give it a second. We're going to go back, jump into Apple CarPlay, and we've got our split screen now. So it is nice to know that we can go full screen, we can go split screen, just depending on whatever our preferences are. Honestly, I would probably just keep it full screen all the time because I think that looks really, really sharp. Now, one of the cool things is that we can still be connected through Apple CarPlay and we can use our radio as well. So let's kind of hop in. There we go. We'll go back into CarPlay. There we go. So as you can see, we've got F AM, FM going, etc. while we're connected to CarPlay. So we don't have to worry about going based off of whatever's going on with CarPlay. We can literally just kind of, we can have our AM, FM going while still connected to CarPlay for maps if we want to use Waze instead. Now, one of the cool things about the Apple side of things is that inside of our actual phone settings there, if we go into a general settings, we've got CarPlay and we've got Kona. We can customize and we can literally drag and drop to customize our launcher. So if you have a tendency to ooh, maybe listen to audiobooks or maybe you love your podcasts, we can kind of drag and drop and it's dynamically going to update the screen for us. If you delete something because you don't necessarily use it, most of the bottom of the screen there. And if you delete too many things, reorganize, we can literally just reset in order to bring us back to our factory default screen there instead. Moving back to our home screen, as you can see, everything is back to our default. We press the high and day button there again, and that brings us back to this home screen setting. So really that simple to be able to set up CarPlay there. But when we jump back into CarPlay there, we can hop back out very simply as well. Now going back into our setup, we go to device connections. Watch this, Apple CarPlay. So we can't technically make any changes here unless we're physically disconnected from the vehicle. 
So going back into CarPlay now, we can enable it. So we can actually completely disable CarPlay, which means that if the vehicle senses a USB connection, it's not going to enable CarPlay whatsoever. So if you want to be charged up in literally just that, just charging up without using CarPlay, that's exactly how we're going to be able to do it. And it really is that simple connecting an iPhone to this vehicle. Right now, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So what we're gonna do first and foremost, we've got, we go to our device connections, we've got our Bluetooth connections there. So we've got a few different ways we can kind of get into the actual phone itself because if we're on the homepage there, we can literally just click on phone. And as you can see there, we are back in my actual phone. So we can jump back into the phone there and that's gonna be the iPhone itself. We can switch phones out there if we want to, if we had multiple phones connected. But if we go back home, we go into our setup or we press the setup button there, device connections, we're gonna go Bluetooth connections. We've got my phone connected. So we're just gonna delete that device right now. So device is now disconnected and it's completely deleted from the vehicle. We could have it still connected there in order to be able to add a new device in as well. But we've got our hands-free calling and Bluetooth Turn setting there again. Your phone from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Perfect. So on our phone, what we're going to do is we're just going to scan and same thing. We're just waiting for Kona to show up there, which it did along the very bottom. So we're just going to click it. Okay. Pairing up. We need to make sure that the numbers match up and they do. So we're going to hit okay. Perfect. We're connected there. And in a few seconds, oh, look at that. We're connected. So we click on the actual phone. We've got hands-free calling. We've got Bluetooth. We can disconnect, etc. Do we want to allow access to my contacts? Yeah. Let's hit allow there and we're connected. So we are now fully connected there to the actual phone itself. So we're just going to need to, there we go, give it a second there, and we jump back. Now next up, we want to do the same thing for Android Auto. So I'm going to show you this process in order to set Android Auto up as well, because it literally is the exact same thing. But if we go into our phone again, so you can see we've got my call history messages, we've got the dial pad and things like that as well, battery level, as well as the current signal level. Moving back to the home screen again, we can go to our projection manager. And again, we do have to physically be connected. So let's actually go through the process to set up Android Auto. And it literally is the exact same process as the iPhone side of things. So we take our USB cable, we plug it into that front USB port. Boom, plugged in. Opposite end of the cable. We're just going to plug ourselves in. Bam, and watch this. Okay, Android Auto would like to. So we're just going to hit next along the very bottom there. Haha, -ha. look at this, look at this. Oh, should take a second, three, two, one, and we are now fully connected there. So as you can see, fully connected, we can press the button along the bottom to go to our main screen. We can pull up our Google Maps. We've got our notification center as well as our Google Assistant. But we've got tons of flexibility there. So very similar to look to what we just finished seeing on the iPhone side of things. So we can customize some things out if we want to. We've got our games and things like that. So a little bit of flexibility there. Now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, we can also figure out what we want to do from a customization perspective. So on our phone, all we're gonna do is search for Android Auto, and it's, it's literally straightforward, so I'm gonna show you. So on the phone itself, we just search Android Auto. We've got our basic settings there, so we're just gonna click on settings. And as you can see, we've got the currently connected vehicle. We can see previously connected cars, or we can customize the launcher. So same thing. So if you maybe listen to your podcast a little bit more, we can literally just press in order to drag and drop that anywhere that we wanted to. So we're just going to press, drag it, drop it, boom, and there we go. So as you can see there, but in order to be able to have the changes saved, we actually have to get out of Android Auto and hop back in for that to change. So it's not the same dynamic press as what would happen on the Apple CarPlay side of things, but we still can customize the launcher if we wanted to. Moving down a bit more, we've got our Google detection, we've got our day nighttime mode, our Google Assistant, and a few other things that we can do directly through Android Auto as well. So pretty neat. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. So in order to remove the phone from the vehicle, all we're gonna do is go into our Hyundai for a second there, perfect. And we've got our phone, we've got Android Auto, or we can jump into our setup, device connections. And remember, we've gotta be disconnected now, jump into Android Auto to completely disable it if we want to, or we jump into our Bluetooth, Go to our connections. We've got my phone that's connected, so we can delete the device. Boom, delete, yes. And three, two, one, the phone is deleted. So it literally is that simple connecting a phone to the vehicle and setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All right, now moving back. So we've got a few other things for our connections so we can auto connect for different priorities. So if we've got multiple phones connected, we can select which one we wanna connect first. Our Bluetooth voice prompts, we can play the prompts if we want to. 
Moving back, we've got our Bluetooth system info. So we've got our vehicle name, which we can set that up in order to change the name out to whatever we want it to be. And we can also set up a unique passkey if we wanted to do that as well. Moving backwards, so we've got our phone projection, which we've covered off. We've got our voice memo as well, which is kind of neat. So we can literally record record voice memos saying like, hello, hello, whatever we want to do based right on our, phone, on our vehicle, which is kind of neat. We've got our climate control settings there as well. So we do have some climate settings down a little bit lower, but we've got some other basics here, which is kind of a neat thing. So we've got our current fan speed going. We've got the current temperature and our outside temp as well. And we can literally see what settings are currently going right now. We've got our activate washer. So whenever we go to hit the windshield wiper fluid, is it automatically gonna have that going? Do we wanna have it auto dehumidify and defog the vehicle as well? Our valet mode. So we do need to have blue link set up in order to be able to do that. But the valet mode essentially is going to lock the screen out. So valet driver would be able to look through our settings and you know saved addresses, things like that. We've got our HD radio. We've got our base radio, which this is so cool. Such a nice look to it. So we've got our 93.5 or whatever station you want to go to. So let's kind of go to a local station. We're going to... Such a great song. Sublime. So great. So as you can see there, I love this look. Like it's such a nice classic look. Along the left hand side, we can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM. And we've also got our, our seeking there. So we can seek this way. We can seek there. We can use the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to change stations if we wanted to go that route as well. Now, having said that, so we're on at a different station, so we can just star it there in order to save it as a preset. But as you can see there, we can have a mix between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc., all saved there, which is definitely a nice touch. And same thing, so if we look along the side there, we can button press that in order to be able to give ourselves a split screen as well. Moving back, we've got our base setup. So we can get to the setup there, or we can press the setup button along the very bottom right. And that gives us quite a few more options. So we've got our base vehicle settings, so we've got our driver assistance. So our base reaction time there, driving convenience settings. So we've got our highway drive assist as well as our speed change. So it is kind of neat that there are so many things that are available inside of this vehicle. And I mean, we can toggle anything on and off that we want to. So it is pretty neat that we've got that flexibility. Next up, we've got our warning timer. So we can do either standard or a later timer. And we've also got the volume of the notifications that we get our driver attention warning. Do we want to give it a warning? So as we, you know, we search a viewer over too many times, it's going to let us know and give us a warning. We can disable that one if we want to. Down, we've got our forward safety assist. So active assist means that if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's actively going to break for us, or we can just get it, give it a warning, or we can have nothing happen. Our lane safety system as well. So we've got the assist. So if we start to veer over into a lane, it's literally gonna bump us back into our lane. Almost, I want you to think of bowling lanes, like those old school bowling lanes where you, if you didn't wanna get a gutter ball, you'd have those assist lanes come up. Think of this the same way. If the vehicle figures out what's going on with the lane markings, it can literally keep us bounced in our lane as we go. Now it's different from the actual lane keeping system, but this is a basic lane safety system. We've got our blind spot assist. So that lets us know if anybody's, well, it's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, but it can also give us a safe exit, letting us know that there's a potential collision when we go to open up the door, which is kind of nice. And then we've got our warning, or we can turn that setting off as well. And then lastly is going to be our park safety. So rear cross traffic alert, as we go to back up, the vehicle is gonna let us know if there's a potential collision. So we can disable that one if we want to, but it is a very nice setting. If you tend to you pull your vehicle in and you tend to back out of spots instead. All right. Next up, we've got drive mode. So we've got a series of different modes there. So we've got our eco mode, which lets us control a few different things. We go to our normal mode versus sport mode. All right, and we've got different drive modes there as well. So de detailed versus simple alert. So as you can see there, so as we change the drive mode, this is essentially going to be the alert. So whether or not that shows up or not, it's going to be a matter of preference. Heads up display, so we've got a few different options there. So we can actually set the height as well, which is kind of a neat thing. So if you're a little bit taller, you can kind of adjust it as necessary. And you can also give it a little bit of a rotation as well. So it's gonna depend on literally you and how tall you are, so that you can more easily see what's going on. Now, me personally, I would probably six feet tall, have it more or less at this lower setting. And the big reason why it's all based off of where the heads up display is gonna be positioned. And then you can also adjust the brightness of the heads up display and you can figure out what's showing. So we've got our turn by turn directions, traffic signs, we've got our convenience settings, and then we can also show our radio. So if we've got a radio station going, a Sirius XM, et cetera. We've got our cluster screen there. So we can literally select different themes. So as you can see, there's a series of different themes. We can link it to the drive mode, or we can have different ones set up. 
We've got our service interval, so how often do we have to service the vehicle? We can reset if we need to. And then we've got a content selection as well. So what's showing up in that cluster? So we've got our wiper display, traffic signs, icy road. Ooh, traffic signs is always a nice one. All right, and we've got our basic welcome sound. So as we get into the vehicle. So we've got a few other things. So our recirculate air. We've got our auto ventilation so we can get the vehicle to dehumidify and then defog or defrost itself as well. We've got some basic for our lights. So we've got our headlight delay or our high beam assist. The high beam assist is an interesting one because when we've got our high beams on, what's going to happen is if it recognizes an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim the high beams for us automatically. So definitely a really cool thing. We've got our auto lock setting as well. So the auto lock setting, we go to shift into park, it's gonna unlock the doors, etc. So same thing, so we look, so enable, so shift to park. So you shift to park, doors unlock. Auto lock, shift out of park, and the vehicle's gonna lock. So we've got a few different options there and then we can press unlock as well there. And we've got our convenience, so rear occupant alert. So when we go to turn the vehicle off, we've got an occupant alert that's actually going to come up inside of the actual cluster screen there. So inside of the steering wheel cluster, it's going to show up there. And we've got that welcome sound that just came on there as well. All right, and where are we? So in setup and vehicle, I think that was actually it for the vehicle settings. Found, convenience, yep, yeah, and then our auto, oh, auto rear wiper. So what that's going to do is if you've got your front wipers going and you go to flip the vehicle into reverse, your rear wipers are gonna come on automatically as well. That's gonna be the basics of the vehicle settings. Navigation, we've got quite a few different options there. So we've got our map sizes, size for the font. We've got our map color as well. Our different guidance. Oh, actually, was that it? No, that wasn't even it. All right, so we've got our information. So we've got our route guidelines. So we can actually show what the actual route guide is going to take us. We've got our vehicle symbol, so we can customize the way that this thing looks. We can show our vehicle speed. We can show the speed limits on the road as well. Looking at our guidance, so as you can see there, it's how close or how far are we away from the next turn. So we can kind of set that up if we'd like to. We've got our voice guidance. So do we want to have it saying turn in 200 meters? Yes or no? We can mute it out when we're near the destination as well. Border crossing. So as we're coming closer to a border crossing, do we want it to let us know? We've got our camera distant alert and a few others. So we've got our previously a previous destination, our user data, and then we've got some basics for the GPS signal there as well. Moving back, we've got some basic sound settings. I say basic, but that's it's quite advanced. So we can literally figure out what's going on with the actual sound itself. So those positioning. So if you're by yourself, you kind of have it more or less just on you. So focus on the driver. And we can always reset it there as well. We've got our sound tuning, so treble mid-range bass. We've got our guidance as well, so our different sound settings. So again, each sound setting is gonna do something different. Like we've got our parking safety priorities. So when we go to park the vehicle, so our park assist, literally all the other volumes are gonna lower off so we can focus on that. Same thing with the navigation, navigation guidance, etc. Some basic system volumes. This is all in the different volumes. So we can literally set up how loud or how quiet each, volu each individual sound is. Our connected devices, what's going to happen with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc startup volume limit so if we have it maxed out and we turn the car off we go to turn it back on again it's not going to be blasted again as well for us so it is nice to know we've got that flexibility we've got some different sound settings as well so different noise reduction settings oh uh, one other thing sound the beep that we're getting there if that drives you nuts you can turn it on or off along the top left hand side there moving back we've got our unique user profiles that's where we can set up a couple of unique profiles there voice recognition, we've got a few advanced settings. So we've got our beginner, normal, and expert. I honestly recommend just going for the expert mode. And the reason why, we won't get as many notifications. So if we go to change radio stations, things like that, it'll just do it without giving us confirmation that it's happening. Back a bit more, we've got some different layouts there as well. So we go into our screen theme layout. So we've got our analog clock, digital clock, or none. And that's gonna be when the actual screen is off. So if we go to the top there and, ooh, we gotta go home home and we're going to turn the display off we've got a clock there now so we can literally set up whatever we'd like to and literally however we want it to look so i, I shouldn't say however but we've got a little bit of flexibility there so we can adjust kind of manually there as well we've got our cluster screen brightness we've got a blue light filter on there as well and then we've got our rear camera and we've got a button there all right, so buttons. So again, we've got three different buttons that are unique. We've got one button there, and then we've got two on the steering wheel. And each button can do something different. So you can set it up to almost do more or less what you want it to do, which is kind of nice. Moving back, we've got our blue link. So that's going to give us, uh, that's literally an app that we're gonna download on our phone as well. That's gonna give us some flexibility. So things like remote starting directly through our cell phone. And then we've got a series of general settings. 
Oops, if we push the button, there we go. So we can see the model, system info, your data, date and time. And then we've also got our languages. So English, Spanish, French, and Korean. And that's going to be the basics of the actual setup there. Moving back home, one more screen. We've got a few other things. So we've got our media. So we can get to the media there. We can get to the media along the bottom. But we can change between AM, FM, Sirius, XM. Sounds of Nature I'll show you in just a second. But we can also go between Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. We've got our Bluetooth audio as well as our USB music. And closing that out, we've got our Sounds of Nature now. Now listen to this. It might be a little challenging, so listen to this one. Or how about this one? So it's literally, oh, fireplace, yes! Let's drive around with the fireplace going, ah ha ha. So it is kind of nice that we've got these ambient noises. So if you have a tendency to maybe, maybe these things calm you down, you can just have some ambient noises going instead of the radio, which is kind of a nice thing. We've got our blue link there. We've got our notification menu as well as our user manual. So it's just a QR code that we would scan in order to directly launch us into the actual vehicle QR, uh, into the actual vehicle manual. And it's pretty straightforward. Like literally all you're going to do, just pull up your camera. You're just going to scan. We're going to open up. Oh, oh, does not recognize my fingerprint. Here we go. Let's enter in my password there. And as you can see there, launching the manual up. So we've got our video manual. We've got different system overviews. Blue Link, it literally explains a few other things. So if the big one there is if you've got some sort of a warning message on your screen, you're not really sure what's going on, we can just do a hot button press in order to be able to launch the menu. And we can see exactly what's going on with those different screens there as well. So it is really nice to know that we've got that flexibility. As we see there, go back to the home screen, and that literally is going to be this media screen in a nutshell. Pretty cool, right? I love the fact that we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It's a beautiful 10.25-inch media screen inside of the ultimate version of the vehicle as well. But what did you think? If you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop down in the comment section below. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks, and until I see you next time, take care.